Alright guys, today we're going to talk about how you can create an original piece of music for your video using GarageBand. These days, unless you want to have copyright problems, you probably have to pay for a license in order to use somebody else's song in your video. Now, if you want to avoid those problems right from the beginning, you can create your own songs even if you're not a musician and you can do that in GarageBand. That is what we're going to learn today. I wanted to keep this video under 10 minutes long, unfortunately it ended up being like 20, so please stick around. Keep in mind, you do not own the loops in GarageBand, so you have to create an original piece of music, mixing those together to create something that you can call your own. 5-0. Now, stick around, at the end of the video, you will see a link where you can actually go and download the project we use in the video for you to play around with and learn from it. The only thing I ask, yes it's free, but the only thing I ask is that you sign up for my email newsletter with a valid email and you can have it. That's all I ask. Thanks a lot. Check it. When you first open your GarageBand installation, a small window will open where you can change the key or tempo of a song. Doesn't really matter what you choose there because once you get into the main working space, you can change it to whatever you want. Now, here is the play controls. Here is the information of the song. This is your timeline. And this is where your tracks are going to be. Over here, we can change the key of the song, the tempo, and the time signature. If you don't see this uh, window here, you can always move and select which one you want. You can change it in the project. So um, we're going to choose a strange key here, the key of F minor, simply because I can. Uh, but you can choose whatever key you want. And the uh, default tempo is 120, but we're going to go with a slower, more groovy and moody tempo of 94 for this project. Now, uh, this uh, piano track that you get uh, by default, I don't ever use it. Uh, that's mainly to control a MIDI instrument, but uh, I just we're just going to do loops in this project. So we are going to actually delete this one. So we go to track and delete track. When uh, your GarageBand opens, there is no viewer for your loop, so you go to the little eye here, click on the eye, and you see your loop browser. Usually, to start a song, I like to use drums first as a drummer, and you know most recording engineers will start with drums first as a backbone for a song. And uh, we, when you go to all drums here, this is where, where your instruments are and your loops, just click on all drums, and you can see all the loops available for drums. Now, to save time and keep the video short, I already selected a few favorites to use in the video. And what you do to test them, you just click on the, on the loop and you can hear how it sounds. Check it out. Okay, this is another one. Now, you drag the loop that you want to the timeline. For this video, I'm going to use the mixed drums and percussion loop. So let's drag this one. No, actually, no, I want to use the jam rock. No, I said this one. There you go. So let's drag it. As soon as you drag it to the timeline, a new track is going to be created. Note that if it's blue, it's an audio track. If it's green, it's a software instrument. Really doesn't matter right now, but you can find more about that later. Okay, here, this is how it sounds. You kick play. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's very short, and it's called a loop, means basically you can loop it on, you know, as many times as you want. In order to loop it and make it longer, you just select the top right hand corner, and you get that little um, round arrow, and you click and drag out. Now, you can click and drag out as far as you want, but usually you want to get it to the length that you want your video to, to be. In order to do that, you can go down here and select time so that you can see the length, the amount of time that your loop is. Now, let's say that we're going to make a song that's just a minute long. So let's stretch it out all the way out to a minute. There you go. Now, I want the loop to actually end, so it's just going to be a little bit longer than a minute. And we're going to go select measures again. 
and make it click there. So basically just snap. There we go. So back to the beginning. And after your drum track is down, usually the next thing that comes is bass. So let's go and find a bass for our soundtrack. You go back to your loop browser, click reset to reset all the instruments and you find bass. Done. And I also selected a few favorites that I wanted to use for this video. This is how this one sounds. There we go. Now, um, one thing to note is that all these loops have a specific tempo and key. You must know that the tempo actually adjusts itself to the tempo that your project is set to, which here is 94. If it's too far, the number, let's, let's say it's like 140, and you pull it all the way down to 94, it's going to sound kind of weird. So try not to stray too far from the actual tempo of the song, you know, something between like 10 beats per minute BPM, higher or lower is about fine, 20 maybe, you know, just don't go too far. The key of the song also matches the key that have you set in your settings. Obviously, if it's a key that's way far off, it's going to sound kind of weird. Basically, this is the native key in which that uh, loop was recorded. But you are free to stray as much as you want and see how it sounds. In order to test how the loop sounds in your current song, what you do is you play the song first, and then you will click on the loop and get them both playing together to see how that sounds. And let's try it. So we hit play. There's the drums. You go to the loop browser and click on the loop you want to try out. Let's click on here. There you go. As you can see, it sounds great. So we're going to use that loop. Drag the playhead all the way to the beginning. We're going to grab this loop and create a new track. There. Now notice that I placed it a couple measures after, simply because I want the drums to come in first and the bass to come in later. We're going to drag this loop out to the end as well. And I notice here that my bass loop is twice as long as your drum loop. So I'm actually going to stretch my drum loop a little bit more so that my bass gets a full complete loop there. Now here, this triangle here marks the end of the song. So you can set it wherever you want and wherever you set it, it's going to mark where the play has to stop to indicate the song is done. So if you put it there and you play, you'll notice it'll stop at the, you know, the little stop triangle there. Done. Now, a lot of songs have many layers in order to make it more exciting. And for this song, I'm going to add another synthesized bass, which is this one that's right here. And we're also going to test it. So we're going to play and see how both of these sound with the new track I'm going to add. Click to try it. And that's great. So we're going to add that new track. And I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to start where this loop repeats itself and in a new, in a new track. So we're going to click and drag this new loop we want into a new track. Done. And we're going to stretch it all the way to the end. Keep in mind, you don't have to stretch stuff all the way to the end. You can clip it, cut it, and leave gaps, whatever you want to do. Uh, it, just don't make it too complicated. It's good to start kind of simple. People that have experience actually go a lot more simple than you might think. Uh, a lot of beginners just go crazy adding loops and cutting stuff and it just, just, all sounds like a mess. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We're going to start here where the bass, uh, the first bass line is playing and we're going to hear when the new bass line comes in. Okay, and that is awesome. Now we are, we're going to add a little bit more melody to it. We are actually going to add a uh, you know, melodic instrument and we're going to do synthesizers for this one, but you can do you know guitars, pianos, whatever. So let's go reset our loop browser again and we're going to use synths over here. And we're going to try one of these trans synths 
and pads. Basically, a pad is like a filler, and a th the synth is usually called a pad as well, depending on the sound it has. And let's see how that sounds. We're gonna hit play, and we're gonna click on our trans sudden synth loop here to try it on the song we have on the timeline. I like that. So we are going to paste it right around here. Okay, now notice this is a green track. It means it's an audio instrument track. So you can actually uh, create new music using software instruments. But uh, since we are not doing this tutorial for the musician, we're just gonna focus on loops. So for now, these are just loops, audio loops, uh, software instrument loops. This is all you really have to worry about right now. Uh, I'm actually going to move this one a little bit further this way for now. Maybe we'll do something later. And we're going to add a new pad right here in a new track. So let's uh, take this one here. And we're going to drop it into the timeline. There we go. Now, you can, you can um, reorder tracks like this. And I want this track that I just brought in to be on top because that's going to lead. It really doesn't matter. You do it however you want, but I like it this way. Now, from this new pad, it will go into the first pad we, we put into the timeline first. And it's going to sound like this. and groovy okay so um, now we're gonna keep layering the song to make it even more complex towards the end what we're gonna do is have this pad come in first like it's doing now and then have the next pad come in and in the following measures we're going to have them both together now we're just gonna copy paste to do that we're gonna select this pad first go to edit copy drag the playhead to where we want it which is there and then you go edit and paste there we go same thing with the next pad. Select that, I'm gonna edit, copy, edit, paste. There we go. And these two together, we're gonna extend, extend them all the way to the end. Oh, I went past there. Let's fix that, there we go. And done. Okay, so this is a very simple song, but we could say this is our complete song. Um, you want to hear how it sounds when these two pads go in together. Let's do it quickly. There you go. So we go play. effects when you stop it, all the effects that the track has kind of keep echoing after the song is done or stopped. Okay, so there's one more thing we got to do and it's mix. And how we're going to do that is we're going to loop a section of the song a bunch of times so that it keeps playing over and over and we can have some time to move the controls over here a little bit. In order to do that, you select the loop button here or cycle button. And I had a section selected before, so it's right there, but in most likelihood, this is gonna be somewhere else or not even there. Let's just put it aside. And when you select the loop, the cycle button here, you can go and click on this new bar that came in and you drag a section to loop. So I wanted to loop this section over and over again because it's like the most dense part of the song and it will allow me to, to test and mix how it sounds. All right, so let's do it. Let's just play and then we can go here and uh, mess with the controls in order to get the sound we want. Keep in mind these controls here are a lot like a stereo. So you get left and right pan and then you have volumes, individual volumes or levels for each of the tracks. So let's hit play. I notice my synth bass is a little bit too loud and even clipping here. It's showing me red so it's showing that it's distorting because it's so loud. Drop that a little bit. There we go. It also shows here that the entire track is clipping, it's kind of loud. So we're gonna drop the drums a little bit and this bass a little bit as well. And I feel this pad is a little bit too loud too. So let's drop it back. 
stop. We can close the cycle button. And there's only one more thing we have to do now. We need to export the song so we have an audio file that we can use in our video track and basically import to Final Cut or what, um, you know, whichever uh, editing software you use to create your, your videos. Now, to do that, you go to share and you export song to disk. There's other options, but I like this one because it creates a file that I can easily pick up wherever I save it and put it in my, in my uh, video editing program. So click on export song to disk and I don't like to compress it. It's for video so this file is going to be much smaller than video file anyway and I like CD quality the best sound I can get. So click export and you can name the song whatever you want. Here it's Danny Cruz Garage Band Crash Course and I may have another old one here. Yeah so let's just save this with a new name. Two right and that file wherever you put it in your Mac is you gotta find it in order to drag it into your editing software so click Save the program creates a mix down and quickly normalizes it to raise the volumes and done it's done you have your your audio track and all you gotta do is put it in your new video now to conclude this video we are going to simply play the, the song through you can go and download the project file in my website and use it to practice and you can use this tutorial and watch, um, I mean use the tutorial while you watch it you can work on the file in your GarageBand installation in order to get a better experience of what this tutorial uh, um, offers. Now the only thing I ask is that you subscribe to my email newsletter or subscribe to my blog and my site in order to download the, the project. The, uh, you can see on the screen the uh, URL to go to the blog and download the file. Thanks. So to conclude, we're going to play the song through and call it a day. Thank you.